is Dr. Holt. In this video, I have a pendulum consisting of a 2.5 kilogram bob that's attached to a light 2.4 meter long string. While hanging at rest with a spring vertical, the bob is struck a sharp horizontal blow, giving it a horizontal velocity of 4.1 meters per second. At the instant the spring, excuse me, at the instant the string makes an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical, calculate the following. You want to find the speed the gravitational potential and the tension of the string and then once we're doing excuse me once we're done with that we will find maximum angle that the bob will reach before the velocity reaches zero okay I've gone ahead and drawn a picture of kind of what's taking place here and I'm going to go ahead and write my velocity in initially it's uh, 4.1 meters per second we'll come down here I will make this velocity be 4 0.1 meters per second. That's going to be my velocity, velocity initial. This bomb has a mass of, what was it, 2.3, I believe it was, uh, 2.5 kilograms. Kilograms, and the angle relative to the vertical is going to be 30 degrees. and the length of the string is 2.4 meters. So that means this will be 2.4 meters here and this length here will be 2.4 meters here. With pendulum type problems the first thing we want to do we want to find out what this height is. That's usually where people struggle the most. This height is going to be this length which is going to be 2.4 meters minus 2.4 meters cosine 30 degrees. And where I'm getting that, if I draw myself a quick triangle from here to here, the distance from here to here is going to be 2.4 cosine 30. It gives me distance from here to here. And then 2.4 minus this distance would give me my h value, which is this right here. I come down now, I write down all my equations. And again, I usually write everything down and I cancel them out. Potential energy, gravity at one. And I'm going to take, I should have said that prior, I'm taking everything relative to this axis here that I've called the neutral axis. All my gravitational potential will be taking relative to this point. So by potential energy, gravity, one, plus my kinetic energy, one, plus the work done by non-conservative forces, and we're not going to have any, but I usually put it in my equation, is equal to the gravitational potential 2 plus the kinetic energy at 2. And then we're going to let this position right here represent 2. And again, this position is represented 1. All right. So now what we're looking for is we want to find out what the speed is. And we're looking for the speed, excuse me, so we're reaching for the speed right here. We're going to call this V2. That's what we're looking for right here. All right. So now we ask yourself, can we cancel anything out? Well, I have relative to this position, relative to the neutral axis, I have no gravitational potential, that's zero. There's no work being done by non conservative forces. I have no friction here. We're excluding air resistance. That goes to zero. When I get up here, I'm going to have gravitational potential and I'm going to have kinetic. So these both are good here. At the bottom, obviously, I have kinetic here because I have velocity. So now I'm ready to write my equation. I'm going to have one half times my mass, which is going to be 2.5 kilograms, times my velocity, 4.1 meters per second squared. It's going to equal to my gravitational potential, which is going to be mg times h. That'll be 2.5 kilograms times gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times 2.4 minus 2.4 times the cosine. I mean, I'll put the units in there. I should be. I should be really consistent. 2.4 meters minus 2.4 meters cosine 30 degrees plus one half times 2.5 kilograms. Try to get that all in there. V2 squared. And again, this is what we're looking for in this problem. We want to find out what are these values right here.
Let me get that as in red. We're looking for this value right here. All right, now you notice one thing here. Your masses, you can cancel them out here, here, and here. So those are gone there. So now we just have an algebra problem. We have one half times, I'm going to drop the units just for a second, 4.1 squared is equal to 9.8 times 2.4 minus 2.4 cosine 30 degrees plus one half V2 squared. At this point, you just have an algebra problem, and I'm not going to go through all the steps. I assume you could do that, because you, what you would do here would be to do the mathematics on this side, subtract this side, multiply by 2, and take the square root. That would give you a velocity of 2. If you do that, velocity of 2 would equal to 3.24 meters per second. Again, I am assuming you can do basic algebra to come up with the V2. All right, that's going to be the answer to question number one. Question two says, what's the gravitational potential energy relative to the lowest point? Well, it's really is all it is going to be is our MGH. It's this right here, and I'll do that in blue. We're looking for this value right here. That's your gravitational potential. It's going to be the mass of this times 9.8, mass times 9.8 times this height here. If you run those numbers, you will get exactly what I got up here stated as 7.89 joules. All right, now this, so the, the first two are pretty easy. The second one, relatively easy, but a lot of students struggle trying to find the tension. The key again is draw yourself a good free by diagram. I will come down here. I will draw the object first to give you a, a good feel of what it's going to look like, and then I'll draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and color this in. We'll make it red. I'm going to have a line coming up here representing the string like this. Again, we know this angle here is going to be 30 degrees here. Okay. Now we know also this thing has a velocity. Oh, do it with a vector. We know this has a velocity here, and we know it has a velocity of 3.24 because we just calculated that. So V2 is equal to 3.24 meters per second. Now, as this object's going around, the magnitude, actually, there's a lot of things changing. The magnitude's changing, but also, as since I have a magnitude here, there must be a centripetal acceleration because the direction of the velocity is also changing. So I'll have a centripetal acceleration going up. At this point, I recommend you just draw yourself a free body diagram. I come over here, I draw my dot. I will have gravity coming down, force of gravity here. Again, the force of gravity in this case is going to equal to the mass of the object. And again, the mass of the object is going to be 2.5. I'm going to take 2.5 kilograms times 9.8. I believe that gives me 24. 0.5 newtons. I want to validate that real quickly, but I believe that is right. I have 2.5 times 9.8. That gives me 24.5 newtons. Okay, what other forces do I have? Why well, have the tension of strain? Coming back up this way. I label this the tension here. Okay, that's all the forces I have. Now, the only thing I like to do off to the side, I like to have my mass times centripetal acceleration going in, like this. I'm going to create a new axis system. I'm going to draw that close as I can to be 90 degrees. I will color code these so you're not thinking that is a force. I'll de emphasize it, make it thinner. Okay, I'm going to call this my y axis. I'm going to call this my x-axis here. I'm going to let anything that goes to the left going up this way diagonally be positive. Now, if this is 30 degrees, obviously this has to be 30 degrees here. So now I can sum my forces in the x direction. I will set that equal to mass times centripetal, excuse me, times acceleration in the x direction, which is going to be centripetal acceleration. And this is what I'm going to have. I'll, have. I'll break this into components. I will get minus 
0.5 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees plus my tension is equal to my mass which as we said was 2.5 kilograms <coughs> excuse me, times my velocity squared 3.24 meters per second squared I will divide that by the length of the string which is going to be my radius and that's going to be 2.4 meters Okay, I will move all this right here to the other side, which makes it positive. We'll add it back to this, and when I do that, I will get my tension is equal to 32.15 newtons. Again, the problem is not bad at all, as long as you draw yourself the free body diagram, and then do the summation of forces and set them equal to mass times acceleration. Let's verify that is tr true. I got 32.15 and they rounded up to 32.2. Part D, what angle of the string with a vertical when the bob reaches the greatest height? Let's go back to our picture and talk about what's going to take place here. I'm going to clone one of these objects and move it up. I'll take this right here, move it up here. I will draw a vector here. Come up like that. Like that. And then we'll draw a line directly across to here. And what we're looking for in this case is I'm going to be looking for this angle right through here. Don't know why I lost my pen, but I'm going to, this is, it'll still be alright. So I'm looking for this. I'll call this into the theta. That's what we're looking for. And what happens when it reaches maximum height? then my velocity of this position 3 is going to equal to 0. Alright, so really what I need to do, I'm going to try to steal some of this information so I have to copy this all again. Hopefully I can. I'm, oops, let's see if I can grab some of this. I'm going to try to grab all that if I can. Bring it down and we'll modify it. And I'll talk my way through it. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Okay, so now at the top, I'm not going to have any kinetic energy, so this is all gone here. So I'm going to grab some of this too. Again, I'm just trying to save some time, so I want to rewrite this again. Okay, now the only thing that's really going to change is this angle disappears. This angle we're going to do is theta. That's what we're looking for. Now again, I can cancel my masses, that's not a problem at all. And this just becomes a problem of isolating the cosine or the angle. So I'll rewrite this as one half times 4.1 meters per second. We will square that is equal to 2.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. I will pull out greatest common factor, which is going to be 2.4. That leaves me 1 minus the cosine of theta. Okay, I will move all this over as much as I can. And doesn't that give me 4.1 meters per second? I'm actually, I'm going to leave the units off. Hope you don't mind. Just save a little space. 4.1 squared over 2. I'll do this in parentheses. Times... 9.8 times 2.4 is going to equal to 1 minus cosine theta. Okay, at this point I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So I'll move the mi minus 1 over here. This would disappear at this point. Now I'm going to negate everything on this side. And when I do that, multiply everything by negative, this will become negative this will become positive and this becomes positive. At that point all I have to do is take the inverse cosine of all this and I will get my angle and when I do that I will get theta approximately equal to 50 degrees. I go up, verify that is correct and yes that is correct. 
All right, so this is a good example of how to do a pendulum problem. Um, probably, again, the, probably the most difficult for most students are going to be determining what the tension and strength. Again, draw yourself a good free body diagram, and you should get the problem without much trouble. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. Uh, as always, I wish you guys the best of luck.